Hey everyone, I'm back, and we're finally here. Today I'm bringing you guys a new series, Survival Horror History. In this series, I'll be talking about horror games and the history behind their development and reception, as well as their game mechanics and story. For our first episode, I'll be covering one of my favorite games of all time, Parasite Eve. I've been wanting to talk about this game ever since I started my YouTube channel over a year ago. Parasite Eve was developed by Squaresoft and released in 1998. The game is a survival horror JRPG hybrid and the sequel to a Japanese horror novel also titled Parasite Eve. It was written by author and pharmacologist Hideaki Sena. I haven't actually read the novel yet, so sadly I won't be covering it in this video. I'll be focusing mainly on the game for today. I've heard the novel is pretty cool, so I might actually cover it in a future video. We'll see. Parasite Eve has an interesting development history. It started as a potential concept for Final Fantasy VII. Series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi came up with an idea for an FF game that would have taken place in modern-day New York City and would have played out like a detective mystery. Obviously, we never got Cloud and Barrett's detective adventures, but that idea was put aside and would eventually be used for the story of Parasite Eve. And that story is pretty incredible. Please, let me tell you all about it. Parasite Eve's story takes place in New York City during a cold December winter. You play as rookie NYPD officer Aya Brea. The game starts on a normal night, Christmas Eve to be exact. We see Aya arrive at Carnegie Hall to see an opera with a blind date. Her date seems like a huge tool. As the show starts, everything seems to be going well. The performers are all playing their parts and singing their hearts out. The main actress stops singing and begins to stare at Aya. As their eyes meet, it almost seems like something activates within the actress. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the other actors begin bursting into flames and flying into the crowd. Audience members start to catch fire and even burst into flames themselves. It's total chaos everywhere. After most of the people in the theater narrowly escape or burn to death, Aya recovers and rushes the stage. The main actress is there, and she tells Aya that her cells are trying to communicate with her. The actress begins attacking Aya with powerful energy beams. Throughout the fight, Aya starts to feel an immense heat within her own body. She's baffled by this, and once again the actress tells Aya that her cells are calling out to her. During the battle, Aya gains her own power, although it's very weak right now. Eventually, the woman stops attacking and tells Aya that her name is Eve. After having a strange flashback to her childhood, Aya snaps out of it and Eve flies away behind the theater curtain. Chasing after this mysterious woman, Aya finds a giant hole in the ground. She jumps down into it and begins exploring the lower level of the theater. Walking down the main hall, Aya comes across a rat. It begins to scream out in pain as it starts to mutate into a giant abomination. After killing this new creature, Aya wonders if Eve made the rat transform like this. Things are getting worse and worse as your investigation goes on. As you explore the dressing room, you find the diary of a woman named Melissa. She writes about how she desperately wants the main part in this play, and how she'll do anything to get it. She also frequently brings up taking a certain medication to stabilize her condition. Clearly, she has some sort of drug problem. Getting back to your search, you eventually find Eve, and it seems like she's arguing with herself. Eve goes back and forth saying that she is Melissa, before quickly changing her mind and becoming Eve again. The Melissa persona fades away as we see Eve begin transforming into a monstrous humanoid creature. Another fight breaks out between Aya and Eve, and it's a pretty tough battle. Surviving this encounter, Eve begins talking about mitochondria becoming free and how Aya's haven't awakened yet. Aya has another unclear flashback to her childhood. When she snaps out of this one, Eve is gone. After a long trek through the sewers looking for any sign of Eve, Aya loses Eve's trail and calls it a night. Returning to the theater, Aya meets up with her partner Daniel. After dealing with an annoying reporter, Daniel drives Aya back home, and this is where our descent into the nightmare that is Parasite Eve truly begins. Sheesh, Parasite Eve has one heck of an opening. I'll never forget the first time I played this game. Seeing the opera scene blew my mind when I was younger. The game just goes from 0 to 100 out of nowhere, and that mutating rat was really gross. 
I probably shouldn't have been playing this game at such an early age. Some of the imagery really freaked me out and stayed with me for a while. I have to mention that Parasite Eve was actually Square's very first M-rated video game, and they sure did go all out with the body horror in this title. The rest of the game takes place over the course of six days, and it doesn't slow down from here either. Each of the days only get crazier and crazier as the game goes on. You learn more about the mitochondria and the origins of this mysterious Eve woman. At times, the game can feel like a biology lesson. If you never learned about mitochondria in science class, Parasite Eve's got you covered. It makes sense because the original novel apparently goes into great detail about the science presented in the story. Square obviously wanted to preserve this aspect of the novel for the game. Remember guys, the novel was written by a real-life pharmacologist. So the science in this sci-fi is going to be accurate. Alongside all of the detailed scientific exposition, you'll be meeting a wonderful cast of characters who are all well-written and very distinct. It doesn't feel like any of these people shouldn't be here. Everyone gets their time in the spotlight and all play a role in helping Aya track down Eve. I love the interactions between officers Wayne and Torres. Wayne's just trying to impress Aya with his sweet gun customization skills but Torres just cramps his style constantly and berates him for mishandling firearms. Dr. Maeda is cute in a nerdy kind of way. He always believes in Aya and it's just really nice. Also, I'm pretty sure Dr. Maeda is supposed to be based on the author of the original Parasite Eve novel, but it may just be a coincidence. I have a question for you guys. Do the good luck charms he gives you, like, actually do anything? I know that's been a debate for years, but has anyone figured that out yet? They just annoyingly take up space in your inventory. All of these characters and side stories have satisfying conclusions and all tie into the main conflict in meaningful ways. One of the standout stories for me is about Aya's partner, Daniel. Daniel is a single father that has full custody of his son, Ben. He got a divorce one year before the game's events, and having sole custody over his son seemed like a great idea, but it turns out he doesn't actually get to spend that much time at home with Ben. Obviously, this is a very difficult situation, given the case at hand with Eve, but when his son is in danger, Daniel's paternal instinct kicks in and he'll do anything to keep his son safe. He's always there for him. Daniel's paternal instinct also kicks in whenever Aya is in danger as well. It's a really sweet character trait and makes Daniel feel like a real father figure to both Ben and Aya. It's nice to see something so real like this in a video game. I'm actually from New York and I've had friends whose parents were police officers in the NYPD. This portrayal of a tough but caring parent is very accurate to the people that I've known in my life. Also, speaking of being a New Yorker, I absolutely loved all of the New York representation in Parasite Eve. You get to travel all over the city, from the Museum of Natural History, all the way to Canal Street, and even to Central Park. It's cool seeing a particular place in this game and actually knowing exactly where it is in real life. It's like magic. This game does a great job at capturing New York City during a December winter. It's no surprise that Square nailed this accuracy, because Parasite Eve's development team consisted of both Japanese and American developers, with a large part of the game's production based in the United States. So they had access to these real-life locations firsthand. So yeah, this game's depiction of New York is great, and so are the side characters. Our leading lady, Aya Brea, shines the brightest out of this cast of characters. Aya is very badass. She's very real and doesn't take anyone's BS, but she isn't overly confident and she definitely makes mistakes and feels the weight of the losses around her. There's a part in this game where Manhattan is being evacuated due to the threat of Eve. Aya is immune to Eve's powers, so she can get close to Eve without burning up. Every encounter Aya has with Eve, Eve always tries to convince Aya to join her, because Aya isn't like other humans. As Manhattan is being evacuated, Aya almost convinces herself that she's a monster, because she also has these strange mitochondria powers. Aya has a crisis over this, and at this point in the story, Eve has killed hundreds of people and always gets away with it, while Aya always gets there as it's happening, or is always too late. This monster is killing innocent people and destroying Aya's city. You can imagine how badly Aya would want to take down Eve. Eventually, Aya overcomes this self-doubt with the help of her friends and through her actions. But I don't want to spoil the story, I want you guys to play this game. It gets really good, there's like a true burning rivalry between Aya and Eve. And the ending of this game gets insane and genuinely creepy. 
Also, Parasite Eve is like 8 hours long and readily available, so you have no excuses not to play it. Go, go, go download it right now. Aya is calm and quiet, but she's also very capable and takes action when needed. I think the beginning of this game really sums up her character so well. Her overly confident date is nagging her about wanting to go to the opera, and when everything hits the fan, he goes into coward mode immediately. Aya has no time for this, and kicks his useless ass out of the theater. It's actions like this that make Aya such a legendary video game character that I would want to play as. She's not running around screaming girl power or anything corny like that. She's just... she's just so cool and not afraid to be vulnerable, but also not weak at all. She saves her friends and herself a lot throughout this game. So basically, what I'm trying to say is... She's top tier wife material. It's a shame though, because Square Enix pretty much ruined her character later on in other games. But we'll talk about that some other time. The story for this game is great, and like most classic JRPGs, Parasite Eve has no voice acting. I understand that not having voice acting in video games can sometimes make it hard to identify with the characters, but this is a classic Squaresoft game we're talking about here, which means the music is amazing. Legendary composer Yoko Shimamura made the music for Parasite Eve, and she managed to blend opera with fast-paced techno and somehow made it sound scary and really cool. It gets your heart racing when there's action happening on screen or when there's a somber emotional moment happening. If you're unaware, Yoko Shimamura also did the music for games like Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy XV, as well as a huge list of other games. Her style is very identifiable, and the music more than makes up for the lack of voice acting, by bringing you all of the feels. When composing Parasite Eve's soundtrack, Shimamura tried to create sounds that were inorganic and completely unique, and I think that perfectly describes a lot of the tracks in this game. The opening track perfectly sets up Parasite Eve's uneasy and creepy atmosphere, and that battle theme. That is one of the best battle themes I've ever heard. Yoko Shimamura is a legend, and so is Parasite Eve's soundtrack. I've talked a lot about the game's story, characters, and music, but now it's time to finally talk about the game part of this video game. Parasite Eve is literally my two favorite genres put together, survival horror and RPG. I like to think of Parasite Eve as a mix between Resident Evil and Final Fantasy in its game mechanics and feel. The game's battle system is a fusion of real-time and turn-based elements. Like an FF game, you run around the environment until you're hit with a random enemy encounter. When the battle starts, the environment changes into a battle arena. You have an active time meter, which when filled allows you to take action against your foes. Sounds pretty standard JRPG, right? The thing that makes Parasite Eve's battle system unique is its real-time movement and range indicator. When in combat, you have full control over Aya's position. This means if an enemy is out of range, you can move Aya closer to said enemy, or you can use your movement to dodge enemy attacks. You can go through full battles dodging everything like a champ and making it out without taking a single hit. This feels great, but it's pretty tough to pull off. Besides attacking, when your active time meter fills, you can also heal yourself using items, or you can use parasite energy to execute superhuman abilities. The parasite abilities are pretty similar to Final Fantasy's white and green magic abilities. In the beginning, your powers are mostly healing or being able to cure deadly status ailments. As you level up, you get more advanced powers, like slowing down or confusing your enemies. There's a lot of room to experiment with the combat and learning enemy attack patterns. This battle system is my favorite real-time JRPG battle system. The only complaint I have with it is that in some areas, it can be hard to judge range and distance, making it hard to dodge an enemy attack or line up a particular shot. It's really cool because Parasite Eve is distinctly JRPG with its battle system, but it also has an inventory system like a Resident Evil game. If you run out of inventory space, you have to drop things off in item boxes that you find throughout levels. These item boxes only hold one item, so you have to think carefully about picking things up and exchanging items. Since this is an RPG, your inventory will increase as you level up, or you can use battle points earned from defeating monsters to increase your inventory capacity. You also have limited ammo, but after you win a battle, you usually get more ammo as a reward, so running out only really comes into play when fighting some of the more bullet-spongy bosses. Also, it seemed like the better I did in combat, the more items and ammo I got in return, but I can't confirm if this was just random or based on how well I did during the battles. A lot of the Resident Evil feel comes from the game's creature design and level layouts. 
The creatures in Parasite Eve are all mutated mitochondria creatures. They're all very disgusting and based on real life animals. The later games took this idea all the way with including human mutations, which was really gross. Most of the levels require you to hunt down specific keys, which means you'll be exploring all of these areas you visit very thoroughly and backtracking through rooms. This can get pretty annoying in the final levels of the game, but for the most part, all of the levels in Parasite Eve are fun to explore and well-paced for the most part, excluding the Central Park level and Museum levels. There are also a bunch of weapons that you can use. You mostly find them out in the field, and they consist largely of firearms and a few melee weapons. Each weapon has a certain number of attacks that can be executed when your turn rolls around. You can upgrade and mod a particular weapon using single-use tool items. If you like the stats or passive ability of one weapon, you can transfer those parameters onto another weapon in your arsenal. However, if you do this, the weapon will be destroyed once the stats move over. So just think carefully before moving stats around. You may end up getting rid of something useful without knowing right away. Stat customization plays a big role in Parasite Eve. Like I mentioned before, after defeating monsters in battle, you earn BP or battle points. You can use these points to upgrade individual stats on a particular weapon or piece of armor. You can also upgrade the speed at which your active time meter fills, and like I said before, your inventory capacity. You can play the whole game specking out the starting weapons, like the club, and making them super overpowered. It's really cool when video games do things like this. It feels like such a classic video game thing. You don't really see silly builds like this in RPGs anymore. Well, outside of the ladle build in Dark Souls 2. So weird. When you finish the game, you unlock the EX game mode, which is a lot like a new game plus. In EX game, you have access to a new level, the Chrysler Building. The building is 77 floors of terror. This is the game's ultimate challenge, but if you finish it, you unlock the game's canonical ending that leads into Parasite Eve 2. So yeah, there are plenty of reasons to replay Parasite Eve outside of just reliving the awesome story. When Parasite Eve came out, it got really good reviews and sold very well. The game quickly became a cult classic as the years went on. As of this year, the game has sold almost 1 million copies in North America and over 1 million copies in Japan. Parasite Eve was a huge success for Squaresoft at the time. That success earned it a sequel that we'll talk about later. Hideaki Sena was very impressed with the game's release, saying that Squaresoft translated his work perfectly into video game form. Parasite Eve was also adapted into a manga series. It's interesting how at no point is Aya ever naked or sexualized in the game, but in all of the promotional art and manga, Aya is nude and being very sexy. I guess I know how they sold so many copies. I don't have a problem with this, but the sexual nature of this art definitely influenced future games Aya would appear in. Whether this was a good or bad change, I'll talk about in a future video. It's one of those weird pieces of trivia I thought I shouldn't leave out. There was also a special art book and soundtrack collection released that I happen to own because I'm such a huge fan. Oh yeah, one more thing. There was also a movie based on Parasite Eve called <clears throat> Parasite Eve. It's based on the original novel and has nothing to do with the game. I've heard very mixed things about it, but I thought it was alright. I mean, you can watch the whole movie on YouTube and judge it for yourself. Parasite Eve is an amazing game that manages to combine JRPG and survival horror elements perfectly into a very conclusive and well-paced cinematic video game experience. It captures New York City so well while telling the stories of very real characters during an extraordinary citywide crisis. It's no wonder Squaresoft called this game the Cinematic RPG, because that's exactly what you're getting when you play Parasite Eve. I know I said earlier that this game feels like a mix of Resident Evil and Final Fantasy, but at the end of the day, Parasite Eve is its own thing, and I don't think we'll ever get a game like this ever again. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and definitely my favorite JRPG. I'll probably still be playing it for years to come. I highly recommend playing this game if you haven't already. It's a classic, and it totally stands up with other Square RPGs like FF7, Chrono Trigger, and Xenogears. Please don't miss out on this badass little game. Go and play Parasite Eve. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a while to make due to my recent move and me going to EVO this year. I hope you like this new series. Survival horror games are very special to me and I want to give them the spotlight they deserve. I'll be talking about a lot of the popular series like Resident Evil and Parasite Eve, as well as some of the more obscure and rare games that are out there. I'm super excited. 
By the way, I have some pretty cool news. I recently launched a Patreon page for this channel. I'll be doing an exclusive Patreon show called Inside the Sphere, where I'll be talking about video game news and doing playthroughs of my favorite games. I want this to be a very relaxing and freeformed show. It'll be fun, we can all talk about upcoming videos and just chat about other video game related stuff. If this sounds like something you'd want to support, please check out the link in the description. Whatever pledge money I get will go to making the videos on this channel even better. It'll help me get better recording equipment, extra hard drives for footage, and new editing software. I'm actually using a pretty old editing software for these videos. Anyway guys, I hope you like this video, I hope you like Parasite Eve, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao!